and Brianna Morgan, my mother. I went to support Operation Iraqi Freedom in the Green Zone in Baghdad, Iraq on July 25, 2005. Upon arrival at Camp Hope, I was assigned to an all-male barrack. I complained about the living conditions, but Halliburton did nothing to help. I was subject to repeated cat calls and men who were partially dressed in their underwear while I was working, walking to the restroom on a separate floor from me. The EEOC reviewed Halliburton's comments, found them unbelievable, and credited my testimony about what happened. The committee has this finding as an exhibit. On the fourth day in country, I stepped outside my barracks to take a call. Afterwards, some coworkers called me over and invited me to join them for a drink. The men identified only as Halliburton KBR firefighters told me that one of them made really good drinks, so I accepted the drink from them. He, han he handed me the drink and said, don't worry, I saved all my rupees for Dubai, or words very similar to that. I thought he was joking and felt safe with my coworkers. I believe that we were all on the same team. I took two sips from the drink and don't remember anything after that. The next morning, I was extremely sore between my legs and in my chest. I was groggy and confused. I went to the restroom and realized I had bruises between my legs and on my wrists and was bleeding, bet and was bleeding between my legs. When I returned to my room, a man was laying in the bottom bunk of my bed. It wasn't the same man who gave me the drink. I asked him if he had had sex with me, and he said that he did. I asked if it had been protected, and he said no. I was still feeling the effects of the drug from the drink and was now very upset at the confirmation of my rape. My heart sank that day. I reported this incident to a KBR worker who took me to the KBR clinic. The clinic called KBR Security, who took me to the Army Cash. Dr. Jody Schultz performed a rape kit analysis, including photographs and a form that indicated all the bruises. She also took swabs, vaginal combings, and scrapings from under my fingernails, as well as my panties and bra, and put the entire kit together in a small white box. I watched her give this box to the KBR security personnel as I was, again, turned over to these men. During the exam, Dr. Schultz confirmed that I had been penetrated both vaginally and anally, and that I was, quote, quite torn up down there. She indicated that based upon the physical damages to my genitalia, that it was apparent that I had been raped. The KBR security then took me to a trailer and then locked me in a room with two armed guards outside my door. I was imprisoned in the trailer for approximately a day. One of the guards finally had mercy and let me use a phone. I called my dad, who contacted Congressman Ted Poe, who took actions to get me out of the country. I believe he saved my life. I was later interviewed by Halliburton KBR supervisors, and it was made clear to me that I had essentially two choices. One, stay and get over it, or two, go home with no guarantee of a job, either in Iraq or in Houston. Because of the severity of my injuries, I elected to go home, despite the obvious threat of being fired. Once I returned home, I sought medical attention, both psychiatric and physical. I was originally sent to a psychiatrist of Halliburton's choosing. The first question asked was, are you going to sue Halliburton? So my mother and I walked out. Sometime around May 2007, a State Department agent called and said that she was not aware of a rape kit or any pictures of my injuries. I insisted that the rape kit existed and forwarded a copy of KBR's own EEOC response to prove that the Army doctor handed it over to KBR employee at the hospital the night of the rape. It was a few days later that I received a call from the agent stating she had found the rape kit, pictures and were missing, so were the doctor's notes to the top of the rape kit. I have had reconstructive surgery on my breasts and pectoral muscles due to the figurement called by the brutal attack. I am still waiting for a follow-up surgery because I am still not back to normal. I had to sleep with a sports bra because of the pain. I still continue to go to counseling three times per week. It seems that nothing happens in my criminal case unless there is media attention. Right after I was interviewed with 2020, I was flown to Florida to meet with the Assistant United States Attorney. I asked the AUSA, where should I refer victims who contact me through the Jamie Lee Foundation? And she responded, quote, don't refer them to my office, but you may want to refer them to the Office of Victims of Crime. This problem goes way beyond just me. Through the Jamie Lee Foundation, numerous other women have contacted me who were assaulted and raped and were then retaliated against for reporting those attacks. There are at least 11 others that my attorneys are aware of, not including those filed by lawyers and those who have come to me through my foundation. As indicated by the sworn affidavit, an HR representative from Halliburton, it is clear that sexual harassment was an overwhelming problem in Iraq, and this was known to Halliburton and KBR, but they hide it from unsuspecting victims like myself. There has been no prosecution after two and a half years. My attorney, Stephanie Morris, wrote a letter to the Ombudsman of the Office of Victims of Crime. 
also enclosed with a letter. Hopefully the next victim will not have to wait so long. The arbitration laws are so abusive that Halliburton is trying to force this into a secret proceeding, which will do nothing to prevent continued abuse of this nature. What is there to stop these companies from victimizing women in the future? The United States government has to provide people with their day in court when they have been raped and assaulted by other American citizens. Otherwise, we are not only deprived of our justice in the criminal courts, but in the civil courts as well. The, the laws have left us nowhere to turn. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee for inviting me to be here today.